Hello gamers, today we're going to play Naiad in rank and I've got some quality matches for you guys. Last season I took a relative break from rank to focus on my studies and now I'm back, practicing with all of the new adjustments and characters. I was a hundredth on the last week of last season, so right now I'm going to start climbing the leaderboards. Here we're going to breeze past my time in Sabretooth and go to matches in Manzacore. Alright, off the bat we have a team that's pretty stable. We have Barmaid who's a 3 hit and Puppeteer a 4 hit in the worst case scenario, as well as 2 harassers. So here we find Norton first actually, and let's try to down him in a reasonable time before he gets too many magnets. Alright, so Prospector is going to be able to enter these palace here and stun me with his magnet. That is a very good play right there. Um, unfortunately, he won't gain much distance from that because we are in slipstream. So here we follow up into these pallets and I'll take that trade actually. That's very good because our excitement is ready in 2 seconds and once we catch up to him, we are able to down Prospector without a doubt. We're going to follow up on Prospector and I draw back a little bit breaking that magnet line, reducing it to nothing. And I take a hit, I miss that hit and we are able to follow up to him into this pallet area. Okay, this harpoon is just going to be for speed. And we draw back in time to down him at the window. Now Prospector just got down right in front of what's called basically the equivalent to basement because Big Boat on Lakeside has two different levels and we are able to utilize Nyad's 3D Abyss to camp uh, very similarly to basement here. And this team comp does not have a very stable rescuer because Puppeteer, honestly, he doesn't rescue very well against Nyad, so we'll just have to see. Now Puppeteer already took up 30 water, so this rescue is going to be really difficult for him since the abyss is actually two levels of the entire boat. Trap Abyss, Terror Shock, and there we go guys. What did I say? He's not a stable rescuer. Now they're doing a double rescue, but I'm just going to get the double hit on Enchantress, down Prospector immediately. Now we have to be careful of Enchantress single stun here and we use excitement to ensure that we eliminate Prospector. Now we also have our second chair right here with Puppeteer and it's really rewarding for Nyad when she gets her second chair just right off the bat with double down because she really struggles with winning if she cannot secure her second chair quick enough. Now here we're preparing a very large camp abyss once again. I suggest it being at least 15 in radius from the center of the chair. It helps you against harassers and body blockers who try to protect the person they just rescued. Now I see that barmaid's coming in for the rescue. I predict that she's going through this pallet so I prepare a trap abyss. It doesn't get her but the one in front of the chair does and that's how she gets down as she's trying to run out. I hit Puppeteer out of Lewis, and I think I miss a hit here, yep, but he's going to get down no matter what because there's no kiting area. Alright, Barmaid has gone up, I'm pretty sure she used her self heal because we're able to see that um, the things on the left, it says wounded and it gives you points. If it says that, it's probably because they used their self heal. If it doesn't say that, it means that their teammate healed them. Now this is a fact that's less known and I only found out a few months ago but it's been really helpful. I follow Tinnitus and I find Enchantress, which was just what I wanted because she's on half health. I prepare a 3D Abyss once again by throwing my Harpoon to the right and I follow up on Enchantress. Now here's a detail, when you're drawing back your Harpoon or throwing it, the animation actually prevents you from falling through any obstacles or buildings, so make sure if you want to follow up to just draw back your Harpoon early. Now Enchantress unfortunately got down right in front of Big Boat, so we know where she's going. Uh, home basically, home sweet home, basement, and then we're going to go out and find Barmaid. 
Plot twist, I couldn't find her because I'm terrible at determining tinnitus. That's unfortunate and now we're right in front of the dungeon with Enchantress already gone. So that's a GG's, we were able to win but not keep everyone. Alright, on to the next game. Alright, we are in Sacred Heart Hospital here, what a lovely map. Uh, let's complete the cross here in terms of spawn selection and see who's in hospital. Okay, Weeping Clown, next target please. Uh, let's chase actually Acrobat in Ruins because Enchantress kind of counters Nyad with her single stuns after she draws back her Harpoon. With this first Harpoon, we can just try to catch up to Acro, and then after, with our second Harpoon, we can seal off the entire runes if he decides to kite there. The best course of action here is just to follow Acro and water off the entire runes. Here I draw back my Harpoon to get some of that drawback water on him, but he is able to successfully transition out. Now I think he's gonna try to loop Shaq, so I throw my Harpoon through the window here, forcing him in, and half of it is water off, so if he tries to use that window, he'll have to take water. Now Sacred Heart Hospital is a very strong hiding area. Here I react fast enough to get that drawback water and get one damage on him. Now our blink is up, so if we're careful with this, we can down acro in a very reasonable time. This dash is very critical here, which is also why insolence on Nyad is a great idea. And acro uses flywheel, but we blink him down, but I thought he had broken windows. Does, does that mean this guy doesn't have borrowed time? Uh, I'll just have to make sure later, but let's share him right here. It's buried inside of ruins, so we can set up a really great camp of this. We don't have tinnitus yet, so it's great because we can set up a really big abyss without worrying that we'll get free rescued. Now I see a rescuer over there, but I'm pretty sure a cycle got popped from this way, so I actually see two rescuers. So let's see what we can do from this camping phase. Okay, so Weeping Clown came in with that, but I think the water is going to do its job and just hit both of them for us. What a nice... What a nice thing. Uh, we have nostalgia, so we're able to track acro down. Here, seeing that the entire runes is being watered off, uh, acro actually turns back, and so I follow him. He narrowly escapes with a bomb. Now, in this low walled area, I set up an instant harpoon abyss, and once he's in it, we can just down him with that. Going to set up a really large camp abyss once again. I'm pretty sure the rescuer is going to be cheerleader or weeping clown, which is why the radius uh, needs to be large because they can just dash in in an instant. Okay, so cheerleaders here. I hit and I somehow get juked and hit the chair, very unfortunate, but the water does take a hit on her which is very nice. Now Acro's gonna go in that pallet right there which is gonna be very annoying because I need to use one more harpoon at least to down him. Now because of my mistake and hitting the chair not stuffing cheerleader or getting a double down, uh, we're looking towards the tie, but I instantly down Acro here which is really nice. It's a bit fast to see on the health bar, but I basically combine 50 water from closing the abyss, as well as the 50 from the dash. Now we're entering the typical Nyad mid game phase where she has eliminated a person, but the ciphers are almost prime, so it's looking towards a tie unless we can do some cipher map control and we find a chance to win. Now our best bet here is to come over to Enchantress Cypher, down her near it, and then we camp her chair as well as the Cypher together. Okay, we've got that pallet hit which is really nice, and now we can chair her near the Cypher which is also very isolated. <laughs> mm. 
So that cypher just popped, we're down to one cypher. Their strategy is probably to prime and rescue so that three people are alive for endgame. Now I don't think I can proc C camp for a weeping clown, so I'm just gonna draw the abyss and wait for him. Nice, we caught Weeping Clown off guard with that blink there. I was lacking some distance from the chair because I was trying to dodge his rocket and I guess he wasn't expecting me to go in with the blink. So now I'm pretty sure it's too late for Cheerleader to rescue and we're just gonna go find her and try to go for the 4k. Nice, we got the second hit because Naya just swings so quickly, and that's a GG's. Let's move on to the next match. We are up against Antiquarian Perfumer, Little Girl, and Wildling. I have Insolence and Fast Ballooning to counter this team comp. There's a trait that reduces knockback on the Insolence line, and so if you're going up against Anti, it's really great to bring Insolence. Now while I'm chasing Anti, I know that the basement is here, so if we need to blink someone down near here and then force basement as a way to win, we can also do that. Here she's trying to transition, but my reduced knockback just doesn't let her, and I get a hit. <laughs> that blink is ready in 9 seconds, so we can down her very quickly. Alright, was that a little risky? Yes it was. Did it work? Yes it did. So let's just chair her. And apparently I've been recommended to spectate the pros. Okay, the pressure is on. And I look around and see if there's cypher machines to control, but there isn't, so I'm just gonna go ahead and draw my camp abyss. Now I wanted to cover the whole palette area, but Perfumer came in very early, so I had to get a hit on her. Now I follow up with an extra hit because Perfumer at half health is very different from a full health Perfumer. Now luckily we can track down Antiquarian right here and trap her in this palette area. Now we're down to two full ciphers, I'm pretty sure it's two full ciphers and not like they've timed one already because I think Wildling and Perfumer both have decoding debuffs and the down was pretty early so let's just see if we can find the rescuer. Little girl got that free rescue as I was only staring at Wildling but that's okay because two of them weren't decoding. Now Anti, she has a lot of water on her. If we can get just one of this on her, she'll get down. So that one harpoon covered both of these pallet areas, so they have nowhere to go, not really. And I was also successful in landing a hit on little girl, so that will be helpful to us. By the sounds of it, the cypher has some progress, so let's just try to down little girl near the cypher. Okay, what, what's with your pages, little girl? Come on, you wouldn't have lasted a day when the pages actually cancelled attack animation.
Wildling is already coming in for the early rescue, as he should. Nyad's camp should be very respected at full presence. I'm gonna throw my harpoon 90 degrees here and cover this entire area. Nice, we ensured the double down by blinking on little girl and once we chair her near the new decoding cipher, we can ensure that the cipher won't pop until she's already eliminated. I'm about to chair Wildling until I see that Perfumer is coming in for the rescue, so I just drop him and then let him use his self-heal. Now I'm pressuring the movements of Perfumer and Little Girl, and Perfumer gets downed. In very narrow areas like this, Nyad's dash is very hard to avoid. After I chaired Wildling in the basement, it was hide and seek all over again with me trying to find Perfumer. And I think I finally pinpointed Tinnitus here, but she got away at the last second. Alright, this game we are up against Mercenary, Mind's Eye, Prisoner, and Barmaid. Now this is a pretty standard team, Barmaid can heal, Mercenary can rescue. And so Mind's Eye uh, used her staff at the beginning, so I'm having a bit of trouble finding my first target. On another note, you might have noticed that I've just been using Demon Bane throughout all of these games. It's because I recently tried her out and I feel like the skin feels really nice to use. The harpoon's pretty thin, it feels very similar to her B tiers, which are just the best to use in rank. I have all of Nyad's skins except for her limited S tier, which is also one of my biggest regrets because that skin looks really good. Unfortunately, I joined the game too late for that. Here I found Prisoner and this is going to be a pretty standard chase. Also for this game I've got the trait Warp for better map control and also to counter Barmaid because we can catch up to her and maybe down her before she can finish her Dovlin. But she wasn't our first chase today so that's okay, we can use the Warp trait to cipher control. And then I wait for myself to be fried by the electricity before I can chair Prisoner. I made sure here that prisoner couldn't second kite. And here after taking that damage, prisoner runs straight into this building, which turned out to be a very bad decision because basement is right here, and so I'm pretty sure he isn't getting out of this one. <laughs> There we go, home sweet home guys, let's do the 3D basement abyss. Now I don't do it very accurately here because there's no tinnitus, so we're going out to cipher control instead of waiting there. <laughs> 
after I warp over here, I'm not sure why Barmy doesn't drink her healing goblin, but I follow up. Now that warp was right into a very good kiting area, so I'm unable to get a quick down on her. Wow, the ciphers are popping very quickly, but since Mercenary is on half health, I'm pretty sure he's the one to be decoding the last one, so if he has the debuff, I don't think they can prime it in time to save Barmaid. Also, I'm pretty confident that we can stuff Mind's Eyes Rescue, because she isn't a rescuer. Here I get Tinnitus, and when I pull back, the Tinnitus is gone. I'm pretty sure she's to my right. And it seems like they're not going for the before half rescue here. I prepare a trap of this. And here Mind's Eye is still nowhere to be seen and she comes in very late, which is... Okay, you have to respect Nayat's camp. Either come in early or send a rescuer because you won't be able to make the rescue. Mm. Alright, we're back to my favorite phase, trying to determine tinnitus of the last person. Now I get a brief 2 seconds of tinnitus here and I'm gonna try to use the pinpointing method to find him. Here I'm just going back to double check that he isn't healing Mind's Eye and then I'll try to determine his tinnitus. <laughs> From the earlier tinnitus, I'm pretty sure this was the only direction he could have escaped from, so I'm just gonna swim around this area. And okay, we've got one tinnitus, and then I'm gonna pull back a little bit, see if di it disappears. Yep, okay, he's about 30 meters ahead of me. Yep, that actually worked, so he was opening a chest, apparently, and we're gonna follow his footprints. Alright, I'm pretty sure Asushi's gonna go down here, yup. And... Ooh, that was a really cool elbow pad. I love the accessory effect. And now we can share him to get the 4k. Uh, I love the Bungle Stray Dogs crossover. I got Dazai and Chuya, but I wasn't able to pull for Mercenaries. Alright, that's gonna be all of the matches for today, guys. We are going to end off with some essence pulls from Persona 5 here. I know this is a crossover that has a lot of people excited and a lot of people have been waiting for this. I just have my freebie 10 I also bought 5 from the store so I have some from both parts. I'm just going to let that play in the background. Today's ranking streak was really fun. I chose the more entertaining ones to include here, but this took me from 100th to about 20th on the Nyad leaderboards. The top 10 is very competitive at the start of the season, so I'll try to get my S badge back, perhaps a little later. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you're new here, consider subscribing. I have lots of fun content that's coming up. Bye guys, I'll see you next time.